What's up, Leafs Nation? <clears throat> so, the Leafs have finally clinched the North Division. They are Scotia North Division champions. And they did it in style. A comeback win against the Montreal Canadiens. Hopefully... That's a precursor to what's going to happen starting next Wednesday. Playoffs start next Wednesday. Saturday for uh, Saturday for Boston and Washington, which is it's really really weird. The NHL schedule this year, like playoffs are going to start this Saturday. Vancouver is still playing regular season games, and the Leafs don't start till Wednesday. It's all over the place. But anyways, so, yeah, the Leafs played a hell of a game against um, the Montreal Canadiens. And even though Jack Campbell let in a super soft goal on the second goal, on the second Montreal goal, uh, his team bailed him out. Um, they came back. Pierre Engvall scored a really nice goal. Um, they battled hard in that game. Definitely, it, it was not an easy game, but um, it's one of those things, you know. Sometimes your sometimes your goalie plays good, and sometimes your goalie gives up weak goals, and everybody lets in their share of weak goals. You no know, goalie's perfect. Um, the the Leafs really came storming back after that second Nick Suzuki goal. I mean that second goal, which was scored by Nick Suzuki. That was a super weak goal by uh, by Campbell, and Leafs came storming back. And Pierre Engvall scored the first goal, and William Nylander scored a nice goal. Mitch Marner scores a goal off the faceoff, and it's a three-two game. So <clears throat> it was a it was a gritty win. It's what you like to see in the playoffs. And hopefully we'll see a lot of Leafs beating the Montreal Canadiens in the playoffs. And if that wasn't enough, we got good, some good news on Freddie Anderson. And he's healthy enough to play an NHL game, which he did last night. And um, overall, he was looking good. He was moving good. He was um, he was uh, he knew where the pucks were. Um, he was looking for a couple of them. Some weird bounces there, but overall, I'm super excited that Freddie's back. Um, he's you know Jack Campbell's gonna have a super short leech leash in the playoffs and considering he has no experience and and um he's the kind of goalie who puts a little too much pressure on himself and he gets in his own head um you know sheldon keith will not hesitate to start freddie the next game as soon as jack campbell fucks up i'll tell you that right now don't think jack campbell you know if he starts game one and it's brutal that freddie isn't in there in game two there is no rope for Jack Campbell in the playoffs. The Leafs have no rope in the playoffs. There is no, there is no, you know, it's okay. You know, he had a bad game. Let's go back to him. There is none of that nonsense. You cannot waste the game in the playoffs. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, overall, I'm just saying that I'm happy Freddie Anderson's available. He's healthy. He looks good. He was moving well. And, you know, he's the insurance policy. Uh, you know, if, if the Leafs started the playoffs and it was Hutchinson or Riddich on the bench as the backup, that would make me super nervous. That means you're putting all your eggs in one basket with uh, Jack Campbell. And, um, you know, why would you why would you build a Ferrari and put a Honda engine in it? 
and that's what Jack Campbell starting in goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs is like. You built this roster, it's deep all over the place. You spent all this money, all this cap management, this, these you know, these cap hurdles that the Leafs have had to uh, jump over and the hoops they had to jump through to get this team to where they are right now. And Zach Hyman, unfortunately, has to go on LTIR to get uh, Freddy under the cap. <clears throat> and into a game. You know, if you, if you think that the Toronto Maple Leafs are perfectly happy with Jack Campbell being the number one goalie and that they have total faith in him, they wouldn't have accelerated everything that's happening with Anderson and he gets a half a game and then he gets a game and they put Hyman on LTIR to get him into a game. All this doesn't look like a team that's totally confident in the number one goaltender. You know, the Leafs are, are jumping over a lot of hurdles and they're jumping through a lot of hoops to get Frederick, Frederick Anderson in the game. And um, based on what Matthews, Marner, and, you know, the coach was saying, by all accounts, they think Freddie looks re looked really good. And they're super excited to have him back in the locker room. So... Good for Freddie for doing what he had to do to get back. Um, it's nice to have uh, Freddie rested uh, for the for this playoff run for however long it turns out to be. It's good to have an insurance policy. That's all I'm saying. It's I don't think, regardless of how far the leaps go. Think about it like this. Either way, either way, the Leafs will play both goaltenders. Because if you think about it, if things go sideways in the first round against the Montreal Canadiens, then Jack Campbell's coming out and Freddie's going in. And if Jack Campbell plays great and the Leafs beat the Montreal Canadiens and they don't use Freddie... Jack Campbell isn't the kind of guy who's used to playing every other night under this kind of intensity. And you saw it earlier in the season when, you know, he said himself, he's like, I'm not used to playing every other night. I'm not used to being a starting goaltender. This is going to take me some time. He said it himself. And that he's absolutely correct. How many times have you seen a guy go from, you know, from not being a starter to being a starter. And then all of a sudden he plays uh, 40 games the following season as a starter and he shits the bed. Trist, you know, it's guys like Tristan Jari have had issues and, and Matt Murray has have had issues. And, you know, Campbell had his struggles this year. You know, not only did he say himself, my body's not used to this kind of intensity every other night. It takes a whole other kind of preparation to be a starting goaltender who plays 60 games. And he's absolutely correct. He's just being honest. So it's either way, if the Leafs go on a long run, they're going to need two goaltenders because Jack Campbell's going to get tired 1,000%. And so, yeah, either way, whether it goes sideways, Freddie's playing. If the, if it turns into a long playoff run where there's multiple rounds, Jack Campbell's going to get tired and Freddie's going to have to play a few games anyway. So either way, we need two good goaltenders. And, you know, looking at the alternatives in David Riddich and Michael Hutchinson, you definitely want Freddie to be healthy and available because he's way better than those guys. You know, of the four goalies the Leafs had, or the Leafs have, 
There's only one guy who's a proven NHL starter. And that's no slight on anybody. That's that's just history. That's just me stating what has happened for the last five years. So, um, yeah, last night's game against the Ottawa Senators, um, I, I thought Freddie was okay. That first goal, the Nikita Zaitsev slap shot that goes off of Ben Hutton's back and into the top corner. Not really much you can do about that. Although, that Ben Hutton-Dermot pairing needs to be blown the hell up. Blown the hell up. That was a horrible pairing last night. And Morgan Riley was so bad last night. Oh my god. Just holding onto the puck way too long. Turning over the puck in his own zone. Just not playing defense to any any kind of decent level and it's frustrating with Morgan Riley. He can be so good and he could be so bad. But you know William Nylander has eyes in the back of his head and he's like, don't worry about it. I got this puck on the boards and he throws it to Tavares in the slot. Tavares scores. And um Matthew scores within a few minutes left in the game. To tie it up, take it to overtime, and you think to yourself, you know, the Leafs have a chance at the President's Trophy. The Leafs, if they beat Ottawa Senators and they beat Winnipeg, they could have won the President's Trophy for the best team in the NHL. And guess what happens? Mitch Marner has a brain cramp the size of Texas. And this is what bothers me about Mitch Marner. We've obviously seen Austin Matthews take the next the step the next step towards being an elite superstar in the NHL. Mitch Marner hasn't taken that step yet because this is why. Overtime starts, it's 3 on 3. You got Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, and Morgan Riley out there. It doesn't matter who all that the Ottawa Senators have on net, have on the ice. Because clearly the Leafs outclassed these guys by a, a country mile. Even if you put Tavares, Nylander, and TJ Brody out there, it still outclasses whoever Ottawa's going to put on the ice. The Leafs win the faceoff. Mitch Marner has the puck. And what does he do? Instead of turning, just skate up the ice, all he had to do was the Ottawa Senator player was behind him. He just had to skate up the ice. But because he got fucking rattled, he's like, oh my god, this guy's on me. He tried to do a no-look backhand pass, coughs up the puck for an easy two-on-one, and I don't expect anything out of Morgan Riley on this play because Morgan Riley's not good at defense. More, I, as soon as I saw it was Morgan Riley, I'm like, this is 1,000% in the back of the net. And lo and behold, the puck goes right through Morgan Riley as he's trying to put a stick on the ice. And Josh Norris gets a prime opportunity on net. Mitch Marner. That moment, <clears throat> that overtime is Mitch Marner in the playoffs. Just jittery. Um, no confidence. You're supposed to dominate these losers on the ice. This is the Ottawa Senators. Nobody they have on the ice is even close to your talent level. And instead of dominating like the way McDavid and Dreisaitl will do, what does Mitch Marner do? He panics and he throws away the puck and, and they get a perfectly good scoring chance. Mitch Marner is not an elite player in the NHL yet. He, he hasn't taken that step towards stardom. I don't care what his point totals are. Point totals is just about him playing with Austin Matthews. Yes, he needs Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews is the guy who stirs this, the pot. 
M Mitch Marner, if he was great, if he was the best playmaker, if he was elite, that power play would be better because it would run through him. But it doesn't. It doesn't. The power play is not good. It runs through Morgan. I mean, it runs through Morgan Riley instead of Mitch Marner because Mitch Marner can make a play on the power play, and he has Tavares, Nylander, and Matthews to pass to. If M Mitch Marner was elite, the power play would be better, and this guy would be quarterbacking it. Not that we need Rasmus Sandin to come and save the power play. If that's the case, take this guy in his $11 million contract and send it somewhere else because all we need is Rasmus Sandin. We don't even need this guy. Matthews has been scoring goals without Mitch Marner for years. What does he need Mitch Marner for? T T Tavares changed his stick and now he's scoring like crazy. He's at 50 points in... Uh, 50, 50 points in 55 games. So, you know, that one year Tavares scored 47 goals, it apparently had nothing to do with Mitch Marner because this season, even though Tavares didn't score a point for the longest time, he's he just changed his stick and he figured it out. It wasn't, it wasn't a line issue. It wasn't a Nylander issue. Nylander has been hot recently too. I mean, Nylander and Tavares have some decent chemistry. We saw it last night. Great pass, great goal. But Mitch Marner, man, come on. Mitch Marner should be dominating certain teams. I don't see Mitch Marner dominating anybody. The way Austin Matthews makes plays and scores goals, he is dominating. Mitch Marner, the best play Mitch Marner made this season was against uh, two games ago against Montreal where he waited out the goaltender and then went around him and then uh, put the puck in the net. It took 54 games for us to see that. That's the first time Mitch Marner has pulled that move this season. 54 games into the season. I have a lot of problems with Mitch Marner, but nobody talks about it. When you look on Twitter and Facebook, nobody says nothing about Mitch Marner. But when Connor Brown scores on the Leafs, Twitter and Facebook is full of, I wish we would have traded Nylander and kept Connor Brown. Are you for fucking real right now? If you were one of those people, or if you agree with that idea, get away from hockey. You have no clue what you're talking about. Nylander was way more effective last night than Mitch Marner could have dreamt of being. Come on, man. Have some common sense. Mitch Marner needs to be way better. If he pulls that shit in the playoffs, if he pulls a playoff like that and they score on the goalie, it, it doesn't matter who's in net. It's not the goalie's fault. Giving up a prime two-on-one like that is solely on Mitch Marner. And he's done it time and time again in overtime. You know, Mitch Ma Matthews saves the Leafs in overtime. He usually ten uh, ends up doing something, whether, you know, going around behind the net, passing it to Hall, Hall gets an empty net, or whether it's he's dangling goalies in the overtime or if he's shooting and scoring. Matthews makes up for a lot of Mitch Marner's shortcomings, and there are a lot of shortcomings. Pay attention in the playoffs. You're going to see Mitch Marner get swarmed. You're going to see Mitch Marner get knocked off the puck. And you're going, to get a, you're going to watch him getting knocked down. Because he's not very big. He's not very strong. He's not built for the playoffs. 
you know, it's it's not like he's really dangling anybody. He makes some nice passes, but when time and space gets tight out there in the playoffs, Mitch Marner becomes super ineffective. And we've seen it the last two years in the playoffs where Mitch Marner's been non-existent. One goal in his last 12th playoff game. So, last night pissed me off to no end. All the Leafs had to do was take care of business against Ottawa. And you know the Jets, Jets are going to put it in cruise control in that last game. They could have had they could have had a shot at the president's trophy as the best team in the NHL. And guess what Mitch Marner does? He says, not interested. I'm gonna brain fart all over OT. Who gets rattled though? Like if you're that good, you should not be getting rattled. Oh my god, there's an Ottawa Senator behind me. I got I got I got I gotta make a quick pass. Just skate up the ice. The Ottawa Senator player was behind you. Just skate forward. You could have easily turned, instead of turning it back, turned it up the ice and maybe created a two-on-one for yourself. Matthews was, Matthews was already pointed in that direction. So disappointing to see the things Mitch Marner does and nobody talks about it. Nobody calls it out. Everybody calls out Freddie or they call out Morgan Riley, but nobody talks about Mitch Marner and how he, you know, obviously his part time job is delivering pizzas because we saw it in overtime. That was a hot and ready pepperoni. Hot and ready pepperoni. Come on, man. Anyways, Leafs got Friday night against the Winnipeg Jets, and and the Jets. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I was looking at this guy. I'm like, it says here Ottawa beat Winnipeg four two, and I'm like. I forgot what day I was looking at, but yes. So Winnipeg's coming off a loss. And, um, you know, games really don't matter. So we'll see what happens. Um, the lineups are going to be super interesting uh, based on what's going on in practice. Galchenyuk is, Galchenyuk is a scratch. The Leafs have Hyman on the top line with Matthews and Marner. And they have Felino with um, Tavares and Nylander. And they have Kerfoot and Mikheyev with Riley Nash on the third line. And Spezza is centering the fourth line with Simmons and Joe Thornton. And I think right now the Sheldon Keefe is searching hard for a shutdown third line. I don't I don't know why you would put uh Kerfoot on the shutdown third line. I mean I kind of see it, but Mikheyev, I understand 100%. The guy skates like a freight train. He just, he can pick up speed and accelerate at such a ridiculous speed. And he's got hands and he's blown by defensemen on a daily basis. Love Ilya Mikheyev. Um, I could see why him and Riley Nash would be paired up. But, um... I don't know if it would serve. I don't know if it would serve Kerfoot better to center that fourth line between Spezza and Thornton, and have like maybe a Wayne Simmons step up onto that third line as a shutdown. I know he's not the quickest player in the world, but you know he just he just knows where to be. He knows where to put the pucks. You know he's got a he's he's you know it's just the years of experience. He just 
You see him on the power play yesterday. The Leafs power play atrocious. Thank you, Mitch Marner. You know, the one moment he, he decided to take the puck to the net and he created chaos for about two seconds, it was enough for the Leafs to get it to the point and Muzzin rips it into the net. And that's just a veteran guy knowing that if you take the puck to the net and the other team's PK collapses, you know, if you can create a rebound or if you can create some havoc, it opens everybody up and you know you see the leaves take take the puck out of that scrum and then they give it to the they gave it to muzzin on the point and muzzin ripped it right into the net and the goalie the goalie wasn't anywhere close to making that safe so it's just it's just veteran place you know knowing what the fundamentals are in hockey and you know, the Leafs just need to shoot more on the power play and follow Simmons' lead. But so I, I think Simmons as a crash and bang guy, as a guy who just knows how to dump and chase and cycle the puck, he'd be super effective on that third line uh, with Mikheyev and Ry Riley Nash. I haven't seen Riley Nash play in a really, really long time. Last time I saw Riley Nash play was against the Leafs in the playoffs uh, when he was playing for Columbus. So I don't remember how fast he is. But I don't remember him being slow either. So um, it's going to be interesting. That third line is going to play against the other team's best. So... You know, if that's this Nick Suzuki line for the Montreal Canadiens, then you're going to see the Riley Nash line just, just lead on those guys. They're going to be out every shift against those guys. They're going to be hitting them hard. They're going to be just smothering those guys. And, and you know, we just need some solid goaltending. Nothing spectacular. I don't see, um, you know, I don't see this Leafs Montreal Canadian series going seven games. Um, no disrespect to Montreal, but um, it's going to be <coughs> going to be it's going to be either like a five or six game series. You know, it's uh, Carey Price hasn't played for a long time. Shea Weber's hurt right now. Gallagher's hurt right now. So I don't know what their injury situation is. You know, even if Carey Price is healthy, are you going to play him the first game of the playoffs? He hasn't played. He, he hasn't played over a month. So it's it's going to be interesting when Montreal does. I, you know, Gallagher is a heart and soul guy for their, for the Montreal Canadiens. So you're going to see them get a boost if he comes back into the lineup. But is that boost enough to make a huge difference? I don't know. Is he going to be on the top line? I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting to see what the Montreal Canadiens do to match up against the Leafs. Um, but I'm just ready to go, man. Let's get the regular season out of the way. These two games could have meant something, you know, in terms of a president's trophy, but Mitch Marner took care of that. And now, now the games don't mean nothing. So rest everybody, rest as many people as you can. Don't let anybody get injured. Please. Let's keep everybody healthy for the last game. Let's go into the playoffs. To, uh, if the playoffs do start Wednesday next week, Leafs are going to have some time to rest up. So, um, it's going to be exciting, man. Montreal, Toronto. I haven't seen it in my lifetime. And it's, it's a shame that there's no fans. 
in the bars. There's no fans in the stadiums. We got to do what we got to do to stay safe. But it's a shame. Um, this might not happen again for a very, very long time. Considering the Montreal Canadiens are a 500 team. A perennial 500 team at this point. The Leafs are... They're up there in the NHL. I don't know if there's a chance for these guys to meet. <clears throat> um, in a regular year, if the Leafs were in the same division with Boston, Tampa, Florida, Montreal Canadiens don't get a sniff of the playoffs. So... Unless the Montreal Canadiens get a lot better in the next couple of years. I doubt the Leafs are going to be playing these guys again. So take it in and enjoy it. The seven game series I don't think is going to be a super long series. I think it's going to be over rather quickly. So it is what it is. Enjoy it. It's all Canadian content. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Go Leafs go. Stay safe. We'll see you guys soon.